Hello everybody and welcome, ZDS here bringing you guys another tutorial video. Uh, this time it is going to be how to use PK Hex once again, only this time it is going to be through Generation 6 and 7 Pokemon games. Now you can use, as long as you have the ROM for it or you have a, a, a method of getting the data from a physical cartridge or disc or whatever to the computer to alter it, you can do this with any Poke main series Pokemon ROM, which means Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow all the way up into Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So the way you do this is actually pretty simple. So as you can see, I just started this on my Ruby file. I've done no alterations to it yet. I just have a regular plain old freaking Trico with, uh, you know, nothing special about it. It's a calm nature with a really shitty moveset, a really shitty uh, type of uh, uh, stats. Stupid. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to exit out of the emulator, or exit out of the, the game itself, and pull up PKX. Now, there are two methods that you can use to access the file that you need to actually put into PKX. The one I'm actually going to be using is so stupidly easy, there's literally no reason to use the second method. So I'm going to describe the second method first. It's very simple. All you do is go through your files and then select each of the select files to get to the save file. This is the easier method. You right click the ROM, and by the way, when you put it in, when you actually like open up Citra, um, you're gonna wanna have one of the, uh, you're gonna wanna add a game directory so that the ROMs actually appear on the screen. Um, that'll make this, well, A, possible, and B, easier. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and right click Pokemon Omega Ruby and then just click Open Save Data Location which will open up a folder, which will have the uh, save file inside of it. Um, you can always back select to, to see exactly which ones we're talking here. Um, you can actually see, this is actually the process tree, so to speak. Desktop owner, app data, roaming, Citra, SDMC, Nintendo 3DS, Infinite Zeros, Infinite Zeros, Z, uh, title, and then 004, 0004, 0000, and then this, and then that, and then that. So yeah, but we're just gonna go ahead and, ugh, sorry, I just stuck stick my eye. Anyway, so we're just gonna go ahead and grab the main file and then just simply drag and drop. And there we go, now it's in. So I can exit out of that now. I'm just gonna pull this up here. And I'm not gonna do anything super fancy here. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, alter my current starter. So I'm just gonna select my Trico by hitting the right clicker, right clicker, idiot. Right clicking it and then clicking view. And here, just like with my PokéX tutorials, you can pretty much do whatever you want to it. You can change its nature, change its gender, change its shiny or unshininess, change its level, change its evolution, change the Pokémon itself. Anything you want to do, you can pretty much do here. So for this, I'm actually going to do something interesting. I'm going to make a mild-natured female Trico. I'm going to give her max friendship. Um, then I'm going to go to here. This, if if the uh, check mark does not come up correctly, um, and you did shinify the Pokemon, for a Pokemon that is either A, not obtainable, or shiny in the game, which actually there's not very many, so actually that doesn't really count, uh, but Pokemon that are breedable, if this check mark comes as a red hazard symbol, then what you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to select the met location as being the daycare, and then have it be found as an egg, and then set these conditions here. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to stats, and I'm going to give her max in everything. There we go. I'm going to give her full attack and special attack, and throw a tiny bit into speed. And then I'm going to give her an ice-type hidden power, because I just like having an ice-type hidden power on a Pokemon like Trico, or Sceptile specifically. As far as move pool goes, what I'm going to do is very simple as well. I am going to give her, obviously, Energy Ball because it's really useful for a grass type. Uh, outside of that, select, okay, select the Power Point amount. I'm also going to give her Rock Slide temporarily, which is going to be very good against certain flying type Pokemon. Uh, same thing with an Egg Move or Tutor Move known as Thunder Punch. Very useful. And then I will give her Hidden Power so that she can utilize Hidden Power Ice to its utmost potential. So we will go ahead and select that, select the max BP. 
And I don't have to change anything with the original trainer. Uh, only do this if you want to make it quote unquote appear more legit or if you have to do it for a specific Pokemon that cannot be encountered in game, but even then that's not exactly necessary. Um, or if you want to have the Pokemon gain boosted experience points. Uh, that is the only other uh, necessary method uh, because, you know, as you guys know, traded Pokemon do receive bonus XP. But this early in the game that I'm at right now, it's actually more advantageous to have the Pokemon have the same ID because in games that have the gym badge mechanic, or actually, and actually in every Pokemon game, if you have a traded Pokemon and you level it up past what you're capable of, like, raising, I guess, I don't know the exact criteria or whatever, um, but like when you receive a gym badge and it'll say like, oh, you know, now the Pokemon at level 30 will be able to obey you every command. What that means is that if you leveled up to 30 or beyond before that or after that with the Pokemon that you had traded in, then it will not obey you, which is very annoying. <laughs> but with this, with just keeping the original trainer ID, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click an empty spot, right click it and then click set. And then just going to give a quick and very brief overview of the extra options that this game provides that Emerald and the other games that I've done videos for on this topic do not. So of course in items you can literally have every single item in the game in your bag. So I'll simply, and you can also have almost a thousand of them, so I'll simply go select give all and give all the Pokeballs. Key items I always, always, always leave alone because accessing them too early can break the game. TMs, there's 100 TMs in the game. I will just select give all, select all, and there we go, we're done. And uh, TMs are infinite use in this game, so no need to worry about them running out. Uh, same thing with health items. I will also go give all. Give all will give me every single health item in the game, and boom, there we go. And then finally berries, which is the same thing. Give all, select all, and we're done. I'll go ahead and save that. Box layout you can adjust, I never bother with it. O powers. Now this is interesting because this is something that is exclusive to X, Y, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I don't, yeah, that is, it's X, Y, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Um, I don't get access to O powers until sometime after the third gym battle. Um, like at all. I don't get access to them at all until sometime after that. I don't remember when. But you can actually hack the O powers early using PK Hex. Um, I'm not going to do it, uh, but you can if you want to. I don't know if it breaks the game, though. I've never tried it. I just know that you can. So I'm going to get out of that. You can also change the mystery gifts. <sighs> this doesn't always work. Um, I've tried this before with some mystery gifts that were actually legit cards, and it didn't work. So use that at your own discretion. Pokedex, however, uh, does work. Um, however, for certain Pokemon, um, I wouldn't, like, actually select them. Uh... I believe I did an experiment with Cresselia, and it didn't work. So, yeah, not going to worry about that. Go ahead and exit out of that. Link data. Uh, this is for trading, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, no, battle points. That's right. Uh, so that's different. Uh, I don't know what this is even for. Uh, but, yeah, it's there, I guess. Pokeblocks. This is for, obviously, raising the contest level stats and stuff like that. Not necessary. And trainer info. Uh, you can alter the trainer info. Anything that you see here, you can change to whatever you particularly want. So I don't bother with this either. It's not really important. And uh, then we'll just go select other. You can also change the daycare and stuff like that. These are all things that if you guys have watched the previous tutorials, you guys already know. But yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and select file and select export save and then export main. Now, I never do a backup for this one but it will automatically go to the exact rooted folder where your save file is. Just hit the save button, say you want to replace it, it'll say it's exported to that exact location, shrink this, reopen Omega Ruby, and see, unlike with Emerald and the DS Pokemon, the, the GBA and DS Pokemon games, you don't have to import the save file specifically for this to work. All you have to do is save it and overwrite the previous save, and then it'll work. So we'll go ahead and access my PC, or my thing, and there she is, a shiny female Trico with a nice, powerful moveset. And I'll go ahead and show you guys my items as well. Uh, right over here in the bag, you can see I have every single bloody item in the blackened game, except for the frickin' uh, key items. So anyway, guys, yeah, that is a pretty simple tutorial. I did say to you guys on my last tutorial for this 
uh, for the actually the first tutorial I did of this that I was eventually going to do one for this game as well. Uh, this tutorial can apply to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and Sun and Moon as well because they are on the same exact system. So there is actually no difference, even though they are two separate generations. Uh, just certain attributes might be a little bit different. Um, if you guys would like me to do a tutorial about that, go ahead and leave that in the comment section. And until next time, this has been ZDS, making YouTube for fun one video at a time, and I'll see you guys in the next video.